talk a series of interviews from throughout the Asia Pacific Conference on tobacco are held from Bali, Indonesia. Tobacco industry not only uses its economic power to influence governments to propagate the sale and distribution of its deadly product, but also tries to create a positive public image by injecting larger philanthropic contribution under the guise of corporate social responsibility. Today, we are in conversation with noted tobacco control expert Dr. Mary Aswinta, Senior Policy Advisor, uh, uh, Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance, also known as SIATCA. Dr. Mary has an almost two decade experience in the field of tobacco control and has reviewed industry da internal documents for research purposes. So, without any further ado, let us listen Dr. Mary Aswinta on tobacco industry interference. What has been progress in the Asia-Pacific region on WHO's FCTC Article 5.3 implementation? Uh, first is that the tobacco industry is not a stakeholder in our tobacco control activities and in public health. And that's the reason why the FCTC has got an important clause uh, called Article 5.3, uh, which provides guidelines for governments to adopt and uh, protect their public health um, measures and put a firewall around them. So we have uh, looked at how governments are implementing this very important article and we see that tobacco industry interference uh, has been continuing uh, in uh, the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, we also know that while a tool exists for governments to protect themselves, however, the implementation has been very slow. It's moving at a glacial uh, pace. And so, um, on the other hand, some countries are doing well and uh, some countries are lagging very far behind. So we looked at a range of um, uh, countries and how they're implementing this and we found that um, Brunei, uh, Thailand and the Philippines are doing better uh, than other countries uh, in, uh, in Asia. We did this survey across 14 countries. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, we've got countries like uh, Indonesia, uh, Bangladesh and Japan that are not doing so well. In other words, uh, they do not have an effective firewall to protect the bureaucracy uh, from our tobacco industry interference. In what ways does tobacco industry try to influence public health policies? So there are many ways in, uh, the, uh, in which the industry can uh, affect uh, and influence, exert its influence on uh, public health policies. So one way, for example, is uh, the industry uh, conducts corporate social responsibility activities and through these activities it gains access uh, to senior government officials. Uh, so uh, on the flip side, uh, Thailand uh, has banned CSR activities and in Brunei there are no CSR activities. Another way in which the industry can interfere is when there isn't a transparent process uh, for governments when interacting uh, with the tobacco industry. So yes, we understand that governments do need to interact. However, there are conditions under which they should be interacting and that is to control, supervise and to regulate. And that's the procedure that the Philippines, for example, follows. But this is not standard across uh, many of the countries. Hence, when there is no transparency, uh, it is difficult to exactly know or it provides opportunities uh, for the industry to interfere uh, in, uh, in or block or undermine um, government efforts in uh, tobacco control. Tobacco goes well beyond health sector. So what can be done to prevent tobacco industry interference across sectors? It's true that uh, tobacco control uh, is not just a health issue, it's a multi-sectoral issue that uh, cuts across many different sectors. So uh, when countries ratify the, the FCTC, as in the case of Bangladesh, uh, Japan, all of these countries have ratified, there are 180 countries that have ratified the FCTC, there needs to be policy coherence in reducing tobacco use. So you can't have one arm of the government, for example, the Ministry of Health, reducing tobacco use, and then there is no policy coherence in all the other sectors who go on to uh, promote tobacco use or to promote uh, the investment of uh, tobacco companies. So there has to be, first of all, the principle of policy coherence across all sectors to reduce tobacco use. Then there, is, uh, there are a list of things that governments need to do to either halt or ban some activities. And then there is, a, a, a secondly, to put in place measures to protect themselves. 
So the, the, the don't do's or the, the don'ts would be ban CSR activities, yeah, ban all political contributions, not to provide any incentives uh, to the tobacco industry, for example, and not to regard the tobacco industry as a stakeholder in providing uh, input. So, but the do's would be to put up uh, measures in place to protect the bureaucracy, like the case Philippines has done, is to have a code of conduct for all uh, civil servants, and they don't provide incentives, for example, uh, to the tobacco industry, and to require a reporting mechanism uh, that the industry has to report on its business, uh, to report on um, how much it spends on marketing and promotions of tobacco. So the industry does not declare what it actually spends on marketing. It is not going to do this voluntarily, so governments need to require uh, the industry to submit uh, those reports. So the government has to play a, a proactive role to ensure policy coherence, to ensure that uh, they do not provide incentives and to uh, cut off all those possibilities um, of the industry increasing its, uh, its, uh, its sales of its product and also to protect the, the bureaucracy. And these things have to happen simultaneously. Um, and uh, transparency is a very important issue. Um, and uh, so there must be transparency uh, when the government does meet uh, with the tobacco industry. This means there's a proper uh, meeting venue in the office and there is an agenda and the government knows exactly uh, what is being discussed. And in fact, the government informs uh, the public that it is meeting with the tobacco industry. And what this means is no secret meetings in any hotels or at social events. So when there's transparency, it reduces opportunities for interference. Political parties do take contributions from the tobacco industry. Isn't it a conflict of interest? So uh, according to the Article 5.3 guidelines, uh, there's supposed to be no political contributions uh, from the tobacco industry to any political campaign or to politicians. That is in the guidelines. So it is dependent on governments now to implement uh, that aspect of the guidelines. And uh, you are right in saying that um, uh, this is to reduce conflict of interest. You know, once you have accepted something from the industry, then it's very difficult for government um, officials or policy makers to then regulate the industry or to develop policies that would uh, uh, would reduce the, uh, the the business. Your message to governments from APAC 2018. The um, epidemic that we have on our hands today, 7.2 million deaths. Uh, in the world every year is caused by an industry. So the industry is selling a harmful product and there are 180 countries that have committed to reduce uh, the use of this product. So my message is that we need to strictly regulate, control and supervise this um, industry so that uh, it, uh, its product does not uh, harm uh, the, the public and we need to ensure that uh, every <coughs> government does its uh, utmost to protect public health and to do that by reducing interference from the industry. And the governments should feel free to fulfill their mandate uh, to protect public health. Friends, we were listening Dr. Mahari Asunta, Senior Policy Advisor, Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance. For more updates, please be welcome to visit CNN's website www.citizen-news.org. Oh,